Welcome back. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, game number five coming at you here as we got what is ultimately the final game. Of course, no matter what happens here, it will be it. We'll know which team advances onto the grand finals and which team will drop down to the loser's bracket to take on Druids. Once again, I mean, here we are. Again, the grand finals, guys, it's going to be a best of seven with the winner bracket team up one game to nothing. So a big deal there, but... Holy crap! What a finish we're having here in this series. <laughs> Look at these picks. What is going this on? Is, uh, this is crazy. What is happening? Clanks and Thunderbringer on the same team, and then we've got Samurai and F Fade over at the Hellborn. Yeah. Wow, this, this is going to be a lot of global ultimates. Like a lot of active roaming around. Of course, the Fade ultimate goes very well with the Sand Riff. And uh, the same with the Legion team. Of course, the Mora ultimate and the Thunderbring ultimate. It's going to be a lot of action in this game. This game, it, this game alone, because it's the final game and everything, it, it's worth $2,500. I mean, that's really what we're trying to line here. Yeah, $500 per player. I mean, not too shabby for a game of Han, right? So. Um, that's basically what, what is on the line right now for these two teams for this series. Again, every single series, there's money on the line, guys. So uh, that's what they're playing for, for this one here being the winner bracket finals. So, yeah, to, to see that we're getting lineups like this, that even makes it that much crazier. But, yeah, a lot of global presence, no doubt, from Sync. Um, and, yeah, I want to say, so they, they do they do a suicide sand wraith, right? Is that how they run this? Uh, yeah, what? I mean, Puppet Master and uh, the Sandra on the same team. That's what I find a little bit questionable yeah. at this point. I feel point. like we've not seen questionable. this before. Yeah. yeah. Fade, is he going to be running the mid or is he go I think it's Mickey is the one running the Fade. is uh, like a secondary support role usually yeah. when Sync picks it up. Um, I mean, Thunderbringer on the Legion side whatsoever is definitely going to be played in the mid. I think that's safe to say. Huh. And then we're going to have the Clanks in the safe lane and Moira running in between the safe lane and the mid. So they got left uh, secondary support or the forest and the suicide. And then the Hellborn team, that's a complete mystery. We have no idea how they are planning on laning this. Yeah. Pretty much, uh, pretty much on board with you there. So I, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I'm sure Reason Gaming kind of under the same huh. impression too. Yeah, Insania is probably going to adapt uh, depending on what hero that Reason picks next. If they pick a, like a weak suicide hero, like a melee hero, like a, I don't know, a Pharaoh or something like that, which is usually quite good versus uh, Puppet Monster and Fade to counter that early uh, gank presence of theirs. But if Samurai, for example, they could potentially pick him or put him in a one versus one situation uh, versus the suicide, like we saw in uh, being run in Thailand, uh, especially. Yes, so you get a lot of experience, and then when you hit level six, you just age your offensive tri lane, for example, and get tons of kills yeah. early on. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see the Thunderbringer again. We did see Omni play it against, uh, against Complexity Gaming there in the first series and uh, obviously it worked out well again a great portal key stopper great just scouting tool but also just some nice decent assisted damage uh grimoire not a grimoire but uh spell sunder into spell shards as well you know vice versa it's fun seeing those kind of items on this hero knowing that they actually are pretty damn good on him uh anyways behemoth coming out for a reason as far as their fourth pick uh you see chipper instead for sync esports hmm so Puppet Master support, maybe? I would assume uh, so. Yeah, unless it's a fade know. support. Yeah, that could be as well. I don't know if when I'm looking at this team, like overall picture, I just feel like they have enough core heroes already. I don't feel like they need another hero to put items on. I feel like Puppet Master, or I mean, uh, the Tsemref and the Shipper, and for example, the Fade would have been uh, just enough for their part. Kane. Yeah. We mentioned it earlier in the series. Still nobody had addressed it yet. Well, here we are, the fifth and final game. Again, ultimately $2,500 on the line for this game alone. And, well, they're going to go with Kane. That's the suicide Kane as well. Yeah, I believe they did that the last time they ran it uh, in the hands of Zane. So, Engineer, final pick. Okay, so they will get a support to finish it off. But, again, who's going to be the secondary support? It's Lapland Chipper. 
Yeah, this is going to be, I, uh, this is this is really smart I think because they were adapting depending on what reason pick for their suicide. Now they're gonna put Shipper in their safe lane, one versus one versus the Kane, and then they're gonna have the puppet monster faded engineer going for an offensive try lane and probably like have Sandraf in the mid or something. Yeah. Or maybe the other way around, Sandraf in the safe lane and Shipper in the mid instead. What a funky finish we're having here <laughs> to the series. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure who to f uh, f uh, favor in the tri lane. I would yeah. assume that Sync is going to have a little bit of an edge, but Behemoth is very good at countering those uh, early aggression. Uh, they they definitely can't dive into the one tower at any point. I am a little fearful for Kane as well. Again, his biggest impact is well, obviously his ultimate, the face off. But as we have seen, I mean, if you're able to get some stuns going and some good rotations there locking him down, then it does take away a lot from the hero. I mean, obviously, especially before he gets the portal keys, or excuse me, uh, Shrunken Head. Um, there's a good amount of lockdown here on this Hellborn side. Of some even, even Chipper, you know, provides some mini stuns. You got Fade, obviously, Engineer, and, of course, Puppet Master and what he does. Now, to be fair, Puppet Masters aren't necessarily going to be that strong against Kane. With the face-off, I guess. So, I don't know. I guess the more I'm looking at it, it's not, like, as crazy as it could be at the same time. So, but we'll see how uh, how much of an impact that truly does have. But, yeah, Kane, no doubt. He's going to be all about picking out somebody, saying, you, me, let's go, and uh, locking them down as a result, but also dealing some good damage, of course, because of that steel resolve of his, so. Yeah, and there's the Thailand style. Yeah. That's true. So that indicates that it's a Samurai in the safe lane. Um, it is being played by Flensmeister here, so. Uh, I, would believe that. I mean, Samurai versus uh, Kane, I would probably favor the Kane uh, a little bit over that. So if he hits level 6 before Samurai hits uh, level 6, then uh, he might get solo kill up there. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the entire strategy is ruined, or more or less. Because then Samurai is not going to be able to aid his team down at the bot lane and get those early kills. Yeah. Which I assume is a plan. I mean, having ship eroded over there, I mean, they can easily get five people down uh, and just sit on the clanks at level six. Mm -hmm. Locking down Imba Boy, gonna be priority here. Matt H, though, again, playing the Thunderbringer. Pretty good against the Fade, to be fair. <laughs> It goes back to that <laughs> idea of uh, wanting to use it as a scouting purpose, even. And not only will it see where they are, but it doesn't even get to detect the invis on top of that. So that's uh, going to be powerful here. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be able to break the base. We saw in the uh, series versus complexity that recent gaming, when they picked up Thunderbringer, they were just turtling in their base all the time. I mean, they kept the vision by using the ultimate at random at times, just to. Um, uh, spot uh, complexity out, and then we was turtling in the base because complexity didn't have like any push hero at the time. And same goes for sync this time. Uh, this time they don't have anything to break base with. Yeah. Like, what hero is going to be in the front if you want to break the base? Like, are you going to have Sanruf in the front? That's not going to work. Chipper and Puppet Monster, they can't do it. They're way too squishy. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a long one and probably one that results in a lot of map vision and uh, pickoffs. Well, we're going to wait till Flynn's gets back. Okay, it looks like he's good to go. So, here we go. Here we go again. This is it, guys. Game number five coming at you uh, between Sync Esports and Reason Gaming. I know, again, a lot of people, uh, myself included, not going to lie, really, <laughs> especially with the way Sync's been looking as of late yet again, undefeated in the group stages. They 3-0 Druids pretty handily. I mean, that in itself was enough to be like, okay, Sync is really here to play. But today... Reason Gaming, yet again, competing with them. Again, this is the same Reason Gaming team that actually did defeat them in the first qualifiers of DreamHack here. Granted, again, that was about a month and a half ago. But, again, as we talked about going to the series, one of the teams as of late that actually has been able to put up a good challenge to Sync Esports. And yet again, doing here, they were up to nothing on the verge of trying to sweep the series even. But Sync has fought back to force what is now. A fifth and final game. So there's kind of a quick recap right there. But interesting oh. start here. Behemoth? <sighs> he was lucky that he didn't make that... Uh, that he didn't go down to that tower like mm -hmm. two seconds later. Because in that case, Fade would have spotted him. Yeah. 
I think this shows that the competitive or scene is in a very healthy state at the moment uh, as well. I mean, Sync Esports obviously winning versus Druids with 3-0. Recent Gaming taking on uh, Complexity with 3-2. And then Druids who were defeated by Sync uh, beat Complexity with uh, 3-0 themselves. And now Recent Gaming in this game or in this series which are up 2-0. Like, seems like every team is more or less capable of beating each other. Mm -hmm. That shapes us up for a very good final and of course the DreamHack event as well. Absolutely. Whoa, we got some engagement here. Moira getting caught out. The fidget stone happens to try to help her, but that's not going to happen because of the puppet show. Smackdown Bloodlust Kill coming out in favor of Keizu. Moira was just simply scouting out a little bit. I'm guessing maybe trying to get a ward down, if anything, but in fact, they got the rev ward down. But yeah, that's going to be immediately countered. <laughs> Even that, was, uh, a <laughs> that was a little bit too, too greedy. I mean, it was quite obvious that they were down here with an offensive trial lane, so Mora going straight in. Yeah. Resulting in a early kill for the Hellborn team, and uh, well, now Kiesu is up to 800 gold per minute. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably not going to hold, at least for now, but the point is, yeah, he's <laughs> off to a fantastic start. And already having that ring of the teacher, so it goes it looks at that as well. Again, especially in the tri versus tri lane, things like that are that much more important. Of course, the idea of mana batteries, we always like to stress uh, when you're in a situation like this, important. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for that as well. But right now, Sync, obviously they got the positioning start and going to try to use that to their fullest. In fact, Fade is trying to find a flank here, but uh, his range on the stun is pretty decent. I'm pretty sure he can hit Moyer from here, but... It's just a matter of whether they have the follow-up. Maybe not. And you got to figure that uh, a Fissure Stun is also waiting on top of that. So, But it's safe to say Puppet Master, he's able to last here pretty well right there. Five and six already <laughs> against a one and two. Clex. You know, I'll say this too. Keizu, man, game three and four here. He really stepped it up, playing the Berserker, of course, in game three. And then even the Behemoth last game was quite the star for Sync. And not that he doesn't do well for sake ever by any means, but um, he's not you, honestly usually that big shining star for the team. It's, if anything, usually Mickey, of course, we will like to look back at. But he's, uh, yeah, well, Kissy more or less has to, a little bit more of a laid back role, or not laid back role. He has the most difficult position in the game, which is that suicide role. It is by no means a uh, uh, walk in the park. It's so difficult, especially in this meta. It's impossible to draft suicide heroes. Uh, nowadays that actually do well on your lanes, but uh, I think he's been playing. Oh wait, initiation on the Mora. Yeah. Where is the fade? Fade's not here. <laughs> Fade's coming in, and actually Mora will live initially, but she needs to not get too comfortable. The shards of Archon, nice done from Fade. Will it be enough for the kill? No, it will not. And now Engineer actually in a little bit of trouble, but another good kick stem from Insania, and they're going to look to turn on a Behemoth that will secure the kill. Mora comes in with her with her illusion. They're going to stun both, but. Too much damage already done, so Sync comes out on top in that exchange there. Yet again, this time Behemoth falls. I also say I was kind of taking a peek at the middle lane. How about this matchup here? And it seems like it's a great one for Chipper. I mean, with that focus buffer, Thunderbringer is really not a huge threat here at all. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I, I still I, I still don't think we should favor Chipper too much, but. Uh... Yeah, definitely having the upper hand at least, but uh, oh me, yeah, 220 gold per minute. He got his bottle now at least, so he should be able to last it a little bit more, but uh, mm, I don't know. I don't think the slap should be winning as big as he is. Well, you got to figure, you know, Thunderbringer, a hero that, of course, his attack range is really weak. He, he relies on his, his uh, chain lightning even to even help with some last hits. But when he does that, and if it hits Chipper, then that's giving Chipper mana because of the focus buffer. <laughs> So it's kind of, you know, it does hurt in a sense. Now they're going to try to go for a kill right here. Mora, that's yeah, probably not, well, maybe actually Blast Lightning. No, it's not going to happen. And again, Chipper survives. Are they giving up this tri lane? I Down think so. Clax is here as well. What? <laughs> oh, jeez, and they run right into NG and Fade. But now Fade's in a bad spot. She goes down. Behemoth is going to survive. No, he goes down as well. But now Chipper, he went a little too far perhaps. But now Puppet Master in the party. So it's just everybody's joining this. Clex is trying to run away from the hold, but it's not going to be enough in the end. He gets picked off. And another double tap. This one for Zlapt coming out on Chipper. Wait, Zlapt is playing Chipper? <laughs> I just noticed that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for some reason, Mickey is usually playing the secondary support when they go for offensive tri lanes. Hmm. 
It's just something that, uh, I guess it's just something that works very well for them yeah. as a team. Uh, look at the top, Shipper is coming in. He doesn't have the most of mana, but by the time he gets there, he might have yeah. uncharged up. Can Kane just use his Wele as well? See, see, it's situations like this, though. Like, And I know he might still die in the end, but why did he not switch to his defensive might right there? There is literally no reason to not switch to defensive might. At least give yourself a little bit more armor. I, I don't know why that's just a peeve of mine, but I feel like these Kane players aren't doing that. <laughs> it's just like, switch to defensive might, at least in that case like that. But anyways, he still dies. And probably was dead anyways on top of that. So, good job by Zlap, though. Speaking of him, playing the chipper. Yeah. Having a really successful game so far, 360 gold per minute. That's um, highest of the game. And look at Reason. Like, look at your gold per minute right now. That's not looking good whatsoever. No. That's not. Yeah, you mentioned that they were going to try to rotate. They kind of did. And they got they got caught. It backfired. And now they're back bottom. Um. Yeah, it really seems like it's a funky start here for Reason. I, I guess it's going to come down to – now, obviously, that's where Thunderbringer you expect would kind of shine again, as we talk about it. Against a uh, tri-lane where there's going to be under-leveled supports, his ultimate is going to be that much more impactful. If he happens to find them, you know, be able to blast them down quicker. Chipper is also kind of that similar hero, though, to be fair. And Chipper is yeah. right now having the better time. And we got a Samurai up at the top as well. So if the final bring ultimate were to come down, I'm pretty sure that Samurai would follow up with his ultimate. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know, but what I was trying to get at too, though, is for a reason. It's like where, what are they, what are they relying on here? Because obviously the bottom lane is just not going to all of a sudden randomly get great for for clanks. It's... No, I, I I think it comes down to the fact that, uh, or I think that re what reason should be doing is just transition to Kane down here and just help him secure this lane because so far he's not doing that well up at the top lane so there's really no reason to just shut down the Samurai. just come down here and secure the farm for clanks run this uh, safe lane four versus three instead yeah because unless K or if clanks gets farmed this game there's no way they're going to win it doesn't matter if Thunderbringer or kane is going to take off or if they're going to snowball a little bit clanks is the one that needs to get at least to like 400 uh, plus gold per minute if they're going to be able to beat uh, or take uh, this game from sync. Yeah, and right, right now, there, I course. don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't think they're really certain what they're doing either, to be honest. It's one of those cases, again, it's just nothing very obvious for them. They're just trying to kind of feel it out right now, get any kind of farm. Obviously, you don't just want to sit here static by any means. And Clank's is it's basically Clank's jungling. But you see right here, without a Thunder Claw, you know, still only level 5, he's not the most effective yet. <laughs> he's... He's barely able to kill a Minotaur and a Skeleton King right there before he is going to have to fall all the way back to base. So, But, yeah, it's better than sitting bottom lane, being vulnerable to being killed, I guess. So there is uh, there is that. Oh, is that Sand Wraith? Yep, he's going to pour bottom. Behemoth barely lives. Nice health pot. It's not going to matter, though. Flintsmeister will pick him off. So there's that global presence kicking in now. It's uh, in favor of Sync right here, so... Yeah, Mora is up here, or just uh, ran up to the top lane, but now Sam reported the bottom, so nobody's left up here to kill. I don't know, I don't feel like Reason are the ones that should transition or try to get offensive kills right now. They should just try to play this as defensive as possible, because they're so far behind that if they like give up one or two more kills to sink, they're just going to start snowball. They got the heroes for or to do so with the shipper, with the fade. If he gets level 6 as well, what are you going to do? You need to stop them somehow. Mm -hmm. I feel like Clanks needs to be a lot more active here. I mean, again, it's especially in this role that he's playing and with where they're at, that ultimate will get you kills early on in the game. So uh, he's still static farming the top lane. Even more is kind of babysitting him for the time being. Um, and right now, just basically farming when nobody else is up here. Now he ports bottom lane. So this is what I'm for talking sure. about. There we go. There's a stun. Face off. No, on the wrong side. Damn, it was on the wrong side. Yeah. That's on the right That's side. That could have possibly such been a kill. an important kill. kill. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it would have been. There wasn't any support nearby. That would have been a kill. Yeah. Damn, that's unfortunate. They really needed that one. Look, now look at the mid instead. They got a haste run on Shipper. They're going for the final bringer. Better bringer pops the ulti. He has uh, Sand Wraith fairly low. He's able to dodge some rockets as well, but he can't dodge the rockets in the face. He goes down. Meanwhile, face off on a fade, but the Fissure's done. It screws it up, kind of. Finally, they meet. 
And that will work in the end against him. The Voodoo Puppet on a clanks, and yes, it will finish him off. Puppet Master, he is still alive. Mana Center wearing off right there. And Engineer doing what he can. No, Mana Center's still on him, I guess. But anyways, they turned on a Behemoth. Chipper now joins the party down here, and Kane's on the run. Switch to defensive might. Anyways, he's going to be fine. Uh, yeah, I can't stress it enough. I mean, those little things stack up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, two seconds. It is two seconds, right? Mm -hmm. and it takes yeah. to swap. Uh, and, it's yeah. Two second cooldown. Makes no sense. Yeah, it's just like the Steam Boots. I mean, competitive players are always swapping Steam Boots, more or less, whenever they're using a spell. Uh, so I don't see any reason for why he shouldn't change that aura. Yeah. Well, he gets away, though. Um... But yeah, again, you even saw the face off right there. Using it on Fade, I don't know if that's a target you necessarily want to be using it on, especially one that just stunned, I believe, already. So, oh, once again, up at the top lane, speaking about Fade and the yeah. kill. Okay, well, by himself. But I mean, in that case, by all means, you get a solo kill. Definitely uh -huh. use it. <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, that's but that see that's Kane getting more active now, and that that's good to see for a reason. And what they definitely need here to try to open up. What is... Klinks has double soul scream ring, by the way. Uh, Flintsmeister is supporting. He's going bottom. Yep, double damage rune. That helps, too. That's a kill on Behemoth. But, yeah, Klinks, I just had to double take on that. Double soul scream ring onto him. That's funky. <laughs> I guess he figures it needs, needs the stats. Yeah, well, he's so far behind, so I guess, but... Uh... I don't know if he's going to be able to recover unless he gets a Thunder Claw at some point. Oh, mid. He was I mean, going you know in to help. <laughs> yeah. And Faye just cuts him off. They do kill Chipper still. Wow, so they got a kill. Yeah, that actually worked. <laughs> the flanks gank from the left was successful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, but you know things are a little bit... Uh, you know you're tilted when you're going for those clanks ganks. Yeah, this early on. Again, he really doesn't have a whole lot of room, though, this game. <laughs> yeah, I really feel like the saving grace right now is that Fade is not level 6 yet. If he would have been level 6, it would have been impossible for Reason to uh, even enter their own forest. True. I feel like they should they have it to, more or less, take control over their own forest before Fade hits that level 6 mark. If they're not, then it's going to be impossible. Uh, Zane, Kane, Clank, Skank. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Bottom lane, <laughs> Behemoth and Clanks. Obviously, no portal key or anything like that on Behemoth, so they're kind of just setting up. While Clanks does, or excuse me, uh, wow. Now you got me confused. Kane does push the top lane. Back to the bottom lane, though. Here we go. Jumping on a fade right here. Nice stun from her, though, and helps buy her the time to get away. Zane is porting in on Kane. Oh, Mickey might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah, back and forth, back and forth. Kane wants somebody else, though. He wants Chipper. <laughs> That's not going to happen, though. Chipper will fall back in time. And Behemoth gets picked off, so... He went uh, a little too greedy there. Chased them down. Okay, so they got a war, or a, they got a, a rid of the word here, at least, uh, in the midst of the forest. So, uh, the word of sight is gone for Sync at this point. The last one is going to run out here in 15 seconds as well, so if Reason potentially could get a lane ward up down here at the bottom. They got one. It's a little bit too defensive for my taste, but uh, it's still going to show. Um... So other things to note, though, you got Flensmeister, who's... Oh, okay, he actually does go to Energizer. I was going to say, he's, he was sitting at like 1,800 gold. He's going to save it for the mock there, but... Actually does go the Energizer here, some more combat, but that kind of goes against what Puppet Master is doing, to be fair, is he went Whispering Helm first, so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit yeah, funky there. I think it would have been an Assassin Shroud on him, especially with how active this game has been, but he's going for it now, at least. Just one of the farm tool first. And taking out some Ancients here, so. But Flensmeister, again, going the Energizer. Makes it even that much more of a threat. In fact, he's going to port here to the bottom lane, and that's a quick kill on Behemoth. Can't touch this. Potential is real. Portal key on Shipper finished. That's a deadly one. Kane got one hours on his own, um, one portal key, but um, are they going to have enough damage to follow up? they got to find a bringer ultimate, of course, but um, still feel like um, Behemoth is going to have to pick up the portal key sooner or later. <laughs> it's, at this point, it seems more or less close to impossible to find a farm on the map. I don't know if I like the portal key cane. Um, you don't? Well, it's... 
in usual game, if this is more of a back and forth game, and and I know we saw you know recently I can't, and it makes sense for the initiation purpose, sure, but because of this game right now, I think they just need damage threat, and so something like the Insanitarius even. But it, now the portal key is gonna get a kill right here. To be fair, yeah, I I don't know, maybe, maybe that's what I guess it is good in that aspect. It gives them now a chance to jump first, yeah. rather than having to wait on it. Okay. Well, you it's, convinced uh, me, Snowy. Good job. <laughs> no, but I see what you're getting at. Uh, of course, you would want some more late game transition, especially when Clanks is not doing too well on his own. But uh, still, I feel like they desperately like need to be able to uh, somehow reply sync when they are jumping on those uh, or when they're going for like you know those fade uh, or Samrath ultimate ganks. Yeah, and uh, Polky is definitely the way to do so. Behemoth middle lane again. Farm wherever he can. Double damage Chipper, though, is going to right into Moira. Rock Barrage, but the Arcane Vortex. Chipper, he's in a bad spot. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they weren't the most coordinated there, but that's. Kane takes that care of it. <laughs> Uses the R and takes him out. I mean, so. if you look at it, uh, take a look at the Gold Premier chart, I mean, yeah. it is starting to even up. It's getting a little better, at least. Is Zimbo Boy if seriously going to third Soul Scream Ring? <laughs> oh my god, is he? I mean, he has another Pretenders crown? Like, <laughs> yeah. is there anything else? <laughs> no, not really. Grave locket, but uh, that makes no sense. Yeah, no, I think he I might have been for earlier, <laughs> but now he's going with Thunderclaw. Um, uh, Sam Wraith? No. Okay. Uh, just scouting purposes, it seems. They spot Insania walking into the forest, so this could potentially be a kill. Never mind. Oh, Invis on Beam off. But he was seen picking that up at the same time. In fact, a Rev Ward is still right there. Energy Phil goes down. Look at this. It's they're going out of the clash of the supports. And actually, Engineer is picked up. But at what cost here? Fade comes in to clean up on a behemoth. So let's make it a one for one, he says. <laughs> yep. the they used the Energy thing. Field as well onto Engineer. And that's a uh, rather long cooldown. Yeah, that's true. But I guess it's safe to say that he used Shockwave on Behemoth as ultimate. Or, uh, for Behemoth as well. So. Nice, this is a big find. Now this is actually pretty impactful for reason. They're gonna pick off Zane, or excuse me, they're gonna pick off Keizu. Zane leading the way right there. How did he not get an assist? Did Kane seriously not get an assist? <laughs> Am I just reading that wrong? Or does it not say that for the streak stop? Okay, I think he still did, but... Okay, anyways, um, that was a streak stopper on top of that. You got Nier actually getting credit for it. So... Oh, jeez. Jeez, that shot's fired right there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's safe to say the Slap actually owned this mid lane. And I think, don't think he should have owned as much as he did. He yeah. made a really good job at blocking the lane um, for the first creep wave. So the lane got back to uh, his side of the map, and he was just able to box out the Thundering more or less. This is interesting, though, because really, Reason Gaming has actually calmed it down enough. To where it's there actually is decent hope all of a sudden. I mean, the Thunderclaw is just around the corner now for Clanks. Yeah, he sold the Pretenders Crown, by the way. Yay! Okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, I don't know why Sync Esports are letting Reason back into the game. I feel like they could have closed it, or at least they could have like progressed uh, into this uh, like off to the laying phase. I feel like they should have just grouped up his five and just taken over the forest. But, uh, I don't know, it goes back a little bit, I mean, the Puppet Monster going for the Whispering Helm, and Samurai going for the Energizer, but he hasn't really been active in the game, so instead yeah. of having, like, a Mock of Brilliance on his way, he's, like, still got a very long way to go, and that gives Clanks the opportunity to get back into it. Yeah, I really think Flint's honestly, going the, the uh, Energizer really has proven to be, the, honestly, the wrong decision, because... I'm pretty sure ever since he's picked it up, he hasn't even used it once. And in terms of going for kills, at least, I mean, maybe we were out up here, but that's what I was mentioning. He was nearly 2,000 gold saved up, and then he bought it all of a sudden. I was like, okay, that's, that makes sense. But yeah, if he hasn't even used it since then, he might as well just saved it for the mock at that point and gone straight into it. But point is, he has another 2,500 gold now, so again, not the end of the world. And Sync is still good in that aspect. Sandwraith, by the way, he doesn't realize, but yeah, Kane was coming in with a flank. Chipper's going to fly in. Try to save the day, but it's not going to matter. Sandwraith goes down, but now here's the pursue. Engineer, energy field will be placed. They get the kill on a Kane, and Thunderbring in a horrible spot. He's going to fall as well. So they get a two for one exchange right there between the teams. And it might be more. Chipper, no, he missed that rocket barrage, as the Fissure Stun also misses, though. 
in the end. But again, Kane, he's making catches happen here. Yeah, Fade, by the way, he got uh, two assists in that fight, I think, and he's now on his way to his own Polky. And uh, that's miles uh, ahead of the behemoth. So, Mick is showing once again that he knows how to find a farm. Yeah. Even when he doesn't play that mid roll. That's true, yeah, again, playing more of the secondary support here. Slapped instead on the, uh, on the chipper. But there we go, enough for the portal key. Matter of buying it right there. Chipper getting the staff of the master. Spell shards on Thunderbringer. I was talking about this. He went the uh, spell shard spell sunder build last time. And I think that's probably what he's doing here once again. Another major totem on him. And yeah, what does the major totem build into? That builds into. Yeah, spell it's spell sunder. Yeah. Amongst other things, but. Probably that. And it, again, a good, good portal key stopper in general, too. So Chipper, you mentioned Fade is just about... In fact, I wonder if Fade's even going to go something like a Talon to say. No, he does go the portal key. Uh, Sandraith, is he going somewhere? No. Again, just scouting. But, ooh, Rocket Barrage on Thunderbringer, and he does go down in the... I think he was still dead anyways. I'm pretty sure it was the dot damage that killed him, but Behemoth almost screwed any chance he had of getting away there. <laughs> Blocking him off. Yeah, Thunderbringer's still stuck at level 10. He's been there for quite some time. He's died two times in a row now. <laughs> um, he true. needs level 11. <laughs> and the word's coming back to bite him in the ass right there. Oh, da what? That's, That's nice. the range way too aggressive. Yeah. However, it's a little too far, apparently. Because now he's by himself. Look at the damage, though. Jeez, nearly kills Chipper. But he's going to come out. Oh, the wheelie! Oh, he almost got no oh, the focus, focus buffer. Are you kidding me? Oh, man, to see a thunderstorm completely nullified by focus buffer. That's brutal. Uh, and if he only was level 11 at the point, he was level 10 still on Thunder Ring. So only level 1 ultimate. Yeah. But that, though, by Reason Gaming, I don't know if they are feeling the pressure right now, but I feel like they like they made a statement that they weren't done necessarily. Like after the laning phase, I felt like Sync were gonna end the game rather like at the 50 minute mark. But I mean, Reason Gaming, they made it way their way back. But now, once again, I mean, they feel a little bit tilted. I mean, diving in tier one tower that deep yeah. when you're in this like in a disadvantage like this, that's. Ah, well, that's a rookie mistake. That reminded me of like a Pharaoh play almost we see every now and then where Pharaoh will go in with the Wrath of the Pharaoh and he goes so far that his team is like, wait, we can't we, we can't do that, dude. We, we we can't port like you can. And and by the time the support does get there, you know, obviously the crowd controls either worn off or the supports are, have come in. And that's, that's what kind of happened right there. Kane flew with the portal key way ahead of his teammates. And they could not back him up nearly in time. Moira, by the way, getting picked off. That's a free bound eye for Fade right there. And there's more to come. Sandraid fourth in. Puppet showing a Thunderbringer. He's going to die shortly after. Voodoo Puppet on a behemoth. He goes down too. And three kills just like that. Imbaboy is able to push middle tower while his teammate gets decimated. But, you know, kind of a minor victory there. And actually, he needs to get away now. He's in trouble. Oh. Dust, he was out of range. Super oh. rockets. <laughs> if that rocket hit. <laughs> I would have been so brutal. clutch if that actually managed to hit him. Yeah, it would have been brutal. But he escapes. Yep, and now we're going to have a mark of brilliance coming up here on Samurai in the next minute or so. Mm -hmm. Oh, top lane. Yep, Kane hanging around a little too long. Wasn't even really. I mean, he even still the tower up, so can't blame him too much, I guess, but. Simply a little too far pushed up. And man, again, he got the portal key earlier on, and his start was was he was the only one really on this Legion team that was actually doing okay, and obviously that's kind of changed now. Yeah, they lost all the map vision impressive. for the forest as well. Uh, and of course Fade Ultimate is not making it easy for them to recover it. But uh, Mora made an attempt to pick up that early bound eye because he felt like they desperately needed some vision in their own forest, but dropped it straight away, and uh, well, now he's back on 100 gold. Yeah. Yeah, something else we did see as well, though, with the uh, with him jumping in there with the portal key again. The range on face off is also really long, and and I know it even it says 650, which which is pretty long in the first place. But I feel like it's even longer, honestly. <laughs> it just feels like it's close to a thousand even, but. It's 650 range, so yeah, the fact that he's able to, and then, again, the craziest thing about it is that it won't actually even start the duration until they actually clash. 
against one another. So really, it's even longer than the five and a half seconds at level three, uh, depending how far away they are from you. It could even be upwards of more like seven, even eight seconds. Whatnot, yep. So. That's uh, probably the longest lockdown in the game when it comes to single target. I don't know if Succubus, how long that is. Oh, yeah, no, it's longer than that. I think uh, Static Grip is 5.25 seconds, I think. So, you got to, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And face off, I mean, you know, you can stun and whatnot, but, you know, as far as, like, interrupting channels like Succubus and Electrician, can't really mm -hmm. do that to him in the end. True keeps that. going. He's still locked. There's together. only been one hero kill, or I mean, not the one hero kill, uh, <laughs> one tower kill so far uh, for Sync, by the way, even though they have this big yeah, lead and have, like, more or less been on the uh, Legion side throughout the entire game. Now, the second one goes down. Yeah. Oh, bottom lane, Fade. Well, they find a kill on a behemoth. Then Fade gets the hell on out of there. Puppet Master gonna hang around a little bit, farm it up. Staff of the Master picked up by Zlapped. Saturn group is 4.75. Oh, okay. Really? I thought it was 5.25 seconds for some reason. Huh. Uh, second bit sold is 5 seconds. Okay. Mm, close. Point is, Kane's is the longest. As far as single target lockdown. Well, are we missing anything? Puppet show is not. Yeah, 4 seconds. Um, I guess this mesmerize from Sequest might eh, be. That's, that's not the same. Okay. That's it's 7 seconds same. otherwise. Oh, Fade is looking around. He's going to find at least more. Uh, yeah, she thinks she's TPing out. No, she ain't. Oh, I'm surprised that he or Mickey tried to go for the big play there. Uh, tried to interrupt uh, the Mora and then get the stun on uh, Clanks, but he actually missed the Burning Shadows. Oh. Might not matter in the end, though. Yeah. Clanks is in a big trouble. Yeah, <laughs> Samwraith is like, anything you can do, I can do. Almost kind of really better, not really. He's trying to chase this it down. Clanks is... Uh, flying though. I love it. That's where actually Sarah is a decent candidate to be Clanks, to be fair. The fact that he's one of the few that can actually pursue him when he pops that hawk, but not in, or he gets to kill the end, but at what cost here? Behemoth Shockwave t uh, kills Puppet Master. Thunderbringer. And, oh, there comes Kane locking down Sandwraith. Oh, but Fade. What a stun from Fade. That was for sure a kill on a Sandwraith if it wasn't for the Burning Shadow stun. Where's the Shipper Lessons quote? Yeah, right. Come on, Sink, spam it. He's lapped uh, 11, 2, and 7 right here. He's he's done pretty well, safe to say. It does. I mean, this just adds a little bit of more, like another dimensional for Sink's drafts well when you have Mickey on that secondary support. Because you never know what to expect from their drafts now. They can just swap it up entirely when it comes to, or after seeing their opponent's lanes. Fade, ulti, he's looking for something. Clanks finishing off the Ancients. Again, Clanks is just naturally one of the highest GPM farmer heroes in the game. I think he's third overall. Well, Alyssa was pointing out earlier, but uh, Imba Boy, especially on him, you know, tends to do very, very well. And even in a game that's been failing from the beginning, he's still managing about 375 gold from him. But look at Mickey. He gets a kill and he gets out. No, oh, never mind. So close. Nice I wait. Fire this ever full to is going to be up in 10 seconds if he. Wants to use that. Oh, I think yeah. That might be enough. It Five is. Five seconds. Come on, four, three. <laughs> Please use it. <laughs> do it. Do it. One second. No, no. he's not going to do it. Meanwhile, there's no. a fight actually happening. He used I it, but just... it was too late. <laughs> but they are going to kill Kane at least, and they get Thunderbringer. So I think they're still fine. Choo -choo, motherfucker. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are more than fine. Sink Esports, they, they are just. They are rampaging through here. There's no stopping them at this point. Yeah. I mean, 16k gold lead and uh, 21k experience at a 28 minute mark. Uh, I mean, they don't have the best sieging heroes when it comes to breaking base, but at this point, it doesn't matter. Jeez. Hey, come on, guys. Let's not uh, let's not overdo it here, Sink. Just crush near right there. Full keto. There you go. Gonna try to stop them here. Lock them down. Thunderbringer ulti. Takes out Mickey. But in return, they go down. <laughs> I think it's safe to say we're in that overtime stage right now. Clank's in the background. He's trying to fly away. He will get the kill on Engineer at least. We'll but now Puppet Master. Oh here. boy. There's the hole. Does he have Voodoo Puppet? No, he used it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it should be enough damage. The flashbang hits, but yep, not gonna be enough. That was actually quite close. Yeah, yeah no, Clanks is dealing some good damage. <laughs> As he does, all that magic damage he does, but in the end, not enough there either. So, yeah, we knew it was, you know, game four was the one that really reason they 
Probably had to win if they wanted to win the series and didn't do that. Here we are, game five. Sanko oh, just really had all the more. Mora goes down yet again. What is that, 12 death? No, that's a tank effect 12 death. Jeez. <laughs> and Kiss is just around here with no health whatsoever. Just getting all those kills. Yeah. God, that damage sap is ridiculous. But anyways, GG well played. Game five and the series will go to Sync Esports in the end over Raising Gaming. So, well, we went the distance. <laughs> we went the distance. Reason was up 2 nothing even. And remember, you think all the way back to the first game, that was one of the craziest finishes we've ever had here on Hawkcast. And that's how it <laughs> kicked off. But uh, the long story is that, again, Sync Esports, they do come out on top in the end, and they are going to the grand finals here in this Deadeye Bounty League. Reason going to the losers bracket, though, still alive. They'll be taking on Druids on what will be Saturday. So uh, Only there. two days from now, so it's going to... Uh, yeah, not long wait, but uh, yeah, recent gaming um, must be stinging a little bit for them, just being up 2-0 and not being able to um, make it over to the grand finals. They have to take a little bit of a detour down to the loser bracket now, but uh, I mean, still, they played really well. We shouldn't take anything away from them. I mean, being able to take two games from Sync Esports in the first place is uh, respectable uh, enough. But in the end, yeah, Sync Esports uh, not being demoralized whatsoever, even though losing the first two games and coming back winning strong draft as always from Insania and a just nice performance from everyone in uh, the entire Sync Esports squad. Yeah. So Druids versus uh, Reason. You said it was Saturday 18 CET, I would assume. Uh, yeah. So that's gonna be Saturday on uh, yeah on Saturday at 1800 Central European time, so 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm updating the brackets right here as well to, once again, help give a visual of what we're talking about here. But, uh, yeah, they're, they'll uh, – okay, so, yeah, it's going to be Reason Gaming versus Druid Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 1800 Central European time. But that will be a best of five. And then on Sunday, it'll be a best of seven with sync up one game to nothing. Uh, whoever they end up facing, uh, being, of course, uh, from the winner.